Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today I'm working on a 2007 Honda Accord. We're gonna be doing a left front axle. It's gonna be a fairly easy job. I wanna be the guy that shows you how to do it. So if you need any parts, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So I've got the majority of the weight of the vehicle up off the ground right now. I set it up on our lift on the contact points. It's nice and safe, you can't go anywhere. Um, I have the wheel just barely touching the ground so that when I'm loosening our lug nuts, the wheel won't be able to spin. All right, but I don't want all the weight of the uh, vehicle on there. I just want a little bit, just enough to hold it. I'm gonna turn these to the left with my 19 millimeter socket. I'm just breaking them free. And then we'll remove them once we get it up in the air. There we are, now we can move along. So now I'm gonna continue taking off these lug nuts. If you have an air gun, you can go ahead and do that. Might be a little quicker. So essentially just get off all your lug nuts and then you can move on to the next step. I'm gonna take off this last lug nut. I'm holding my wheel. There it is. Take the wheel off, we'll set it aside. All right, so our next step, we're gonna analyze our situation. What we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to take off this nut right here. This is the axle nut. That's gonna come at some point. Um, the knuckle, we're gonna relieve this nut right here. It's gonna let the knuckle come down. So that'll put pressure here if we don't have this nut off. Also, it'll put a tug on this hose and your ABS wire if you're not careful. So we're just gonna be preemptive and make sure that we don't hurt these at all. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove them from the knuckle, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, okay? If you have access to an air gun, you can use that. Or if you have a ratchet, use that, but it's a 10 millimeter. There we are. That's gonna give us plenty of slack for when this comes down. Perfect. Get this bolt out of here. And we're on the back side. There's a 10 right here, right about here on the inside there. That relieves that. If you wanted a little bit more slack, you can go ahead and do this one. Okay. Now we got plenty of slack. So we got the bolt that came through this side, and we've got the nut that went right there. And then, of course, two bolts over there. Okay. So next, what we're going to remove is this right here. This is a bolt that goes through this. This is the lower part of your strut, by the way. Through the control arm bushing, and then through the other part of the lower part of your strut. And then there's a nut on the back side, which is also a 17. So I'm just gonna take my 17 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna hold the bolt end. I'm gonna use my air gun on the other side. You can use a ratchet if you want, 17. And I'm gonna blast it in reverse, or to the left. There we are. Get that off of there. I'm just gonna take this nut that we just took off. I'm just gonna start it back on a few threads. Give it a few good threads. And then I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm just gonna give it a couple bonks and try to drive the bolt out. Once it moves freely, then I can go ahead and use a chisel and put it out the rest of the way. So here we go. Got my 17 millimeter nut on there. I'm just gonna give it a couple bonks with my hammer. There we are. It's pushing the bolt through. Very good. Did what I asked it to do. Just gonna grab my 17 again. Get this nut back off. The reason for putting on the nut when I did that was just so I didn't munge up the threads. Um, that'll become an issue. So if it was frozen in there, you'd have to worry about it. Where it's not, I'm not really very worried about it. Let's do that. Got my chisel. This is gonna come out the other end, so you wanna make sure that, you know, you don't have anything down there that might get hurt. Like if you're working on the ground, you might have your face under there. There we are. There's our bolt. I'm just gonna set this aside. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna carefully try to pry between here and here. I just wanna pull this part of the lower strut away just so I can get a swivel socket on there. And I wanna to try to take this nut off the sway bar link. Then I'm gonna push the sway bar link out of the way. And that should give us a little bit of throw with the uh, lower control arm once we get the upper off here, okay? So let's see if this works to our advantage. Perfect, I should be able to get in there. Let's take a look at what we got. I've got a 15 millimeter swivel. It's gonna go like this. Once again, you can use a ratchet if you want. There we are. A ratchet might be a little bit harder than an air gun. Um, so take that into consideration. And if you look right inside there, you can see that there's like an Allen head key. 
So if you needed to and you were struggling trying to get this nut off and it's just spinning this shaft right here, because that's what they do, they spin, it's just a ball and socket in there, you would hold that and then use a wrench to turn this off, okay? So 15 millimeter to get that off. This is out of our way now. Now we can move ahead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this axle nut right here and then I'm gonna remove this right here. And we should be able to swing this down far enough. If we can't get it far enough down, we'll just remove this right here, which is your outer tie rod nut. And then we should definitely have enough room to be able to swing this down. We'll try to get the axle out and out on the other end after that. Here's our axle nut. We're gonna use a 32 millimeter socket. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise to remove it. There it is, okay. See if we can push in the axle. We can't. So there's multiple options we can do here. Firstly, you're gonna spray it obviously with some kind of penetrant inside there. Try to get it worked in, okay? If you have a center punch, maybe like an air chisel with a center punch, you can try to go right in there. Um, and that'll help push it through. If you don't have access to something like that, I would just go ahead and I'd take my nut and I would, I'm gonna turn it to the left a little to get it started, but put it back on so that it's pretty much flush, pretty close. And then I'm just gonna hit this with my hammer and bonk it through enough to break it free, okay? So first step, like I said, we're gonna put a little penetrant in there. I have access to an air chisel, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But if you don't, just make sure that you use your old nut, you put it on there, because once you peen this over, you're gonna have a real hard time uh, dealing with that. Not that it's really too big of an issue because we're gonna be replacing the axle anyway, but if you weren't replacing the axle and you were just doing the bearing or whatever your job might be for a different situation, you don't wanna peen it over. Replacing the axle, I guess do whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead with my air chisel. Of course, of course I'm wearing hand protection and eye protection. Safety first, number one concern here at 1A Auto. I'm just gonna drive this through. Perfect, we don't wanna to go too much further than that because at this point we're gonna be uh, contracting the axle. Once it gets to its full point of being contracted, it's gonna wanna keep pushing, and where's it gonna go? Into the transmission, okay? Let's not break any transmission parts today. That's a, that's a story for another day, not today. I'm gonna get this cotter pin out of here, and then I'm gonna take this nut off right here, and then we're gonna try to bring this down. Like I said, if it doesn't come down far enough that I can pull it down and get the axle out, I might have to take off the um, outer tie rod nut. We'll see. Let's do as little as possible, though. So here's our cotter pin, okay? It's just this little uh, pin, <laughs> really. I'll show you what it looks like in a second here. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the little ears, I'm gonna try to bend them down. See if I can get it. There we are, okay. I'm just gonna work it around. I can see this end moving right there. So that means that the cotter pin is ready to come out, so that's nice. Now I want to try to straighten out those little ears as much as possible. And then I want to grab this end, just pull it out. I like to grab it and then pry up against things. If you use cutters, it's usually pretty good. Also, if you have access to new cutter pins, it's always a good idea to have a new one just in case something like that happens. They get pretty rusted and they break. It is what it is. So I'll just replace that. I'm just going to get all these right out of here. Okay. Now I'm gonna get my socket on there. Let's see what size it is. 17, okay. I've got a swivel, I've got my air gun. You can use your ratchet. You do you, boo-boo. Eyeglasses on. Here we are. There's our castle nut. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start it back on there a little bit. I'm gonna grab my hammer. I'm gonna hit right here on the knuckle. I'm gonna be careful not to break my boot. I don't wanna pinch that in any way. And I don't really wanna hit on the control arm so much as just the knuckle itself, okay? And if you can avoid hitting the nut and or the stud under there, that would be wonderful. So I've got my big fabulous hammer. I'm gonna to try to whack just on the knuckle here, like I said. Trying not to hit the control arm, the boot, this, really anything, right? Maybe you got your cable up here. I mean, obviously you'd see that, but whatever. Just make sure it's out of the way, okay? Try to hit right here, and we're gonna hopefully break this free. Once it falls down and hits this nut, then we can stop hitting it, because it's broken free. We'll move along, okay? There we are. 
Grab my control arm, just pull it down. Okay, cool. We are cruising, looking good. Now we just need to get our axle the rest of the way out of the wheel bearing here. So what, now that I've got this down quite a bit, we still got plenty of slack on everything, right? Because we don't have these attached. Imagine if we did, right? We're ripping things. Um, so we'll just try to drive the axle the rest of the way out of the bearing. And once we do that, we should be able to slide it down and out of the little forky end of the uh, strut assembly. And then once it's out of there, we'll pop it out of the transmission. So here we go. I've got my air chisel again, my safety glasses, of course. I'm gonna continue driving this axle up and out of the bearing. It's pretty good. Let's see if it gave us enough. Very nice. Boy, this car's loving me today. Perfect. Get that out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna lift the vehicle up a little bit higher. I'm gonna get under there and I'm gonna try to separate the axle from the transmission. It'll pop out and then it'll just come right out this way, okay? Our quality tool set that we have from 1A Auto comes with two different types of forks. We've got one that's angled and we've got one like this. Sometimes you'll get an axle that gives you a lot of space where you have to have a spacer. That would be what this one would be. And then you just drive this one up and in between and that'll help force the axle out from in between the transmission and the axle itself, I guess. It'll help drive the axle out, we'll say, okay? For this application, all I need is the one, the angled one, okay? So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna use my hammer. I'm gonna try to get right up in here. This is the axle and this is the super expensive transmission. So we're gonna be very careful not to damage this. And we don't really care so much about the axle, right? Because, well, we're replacing it. So I'm just gonna to try to get this in between the axle and the transmission. And then I'm gonna to try to break it free. Just gonna to try to pry now. Okay, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. That's good news. Now I'm gonna to try to pull the axle out. Okay. Um, you can continue with the same thing if you want to. You could even use the, the wider one at this point. Just get it in there. Okay. Now we'll remove our axle. And there we are, left front axle removed. So here we go, friends, a quick product comparison for you. We have our left front axle out of our 2007 Honda Accord. We just removed it. It's fairly easy. I just wanted to show you what it looks like compared to our brand new quality 1A auto part here. I just want to make sure you understand that the length is important, right? So we've got this part right here, the shaft that goes into the transmission. It's the same length, matches up perfectly. So if this was longer on the new one or the old one, well, you'd have the wrong part. As you can tell, it matches up. We can come along, we'll get to the other end. These match up as well. We've got the splined end. Came with a brand new nut, that's always wonderful. You wanna make sure that this part right here is the same length as well. If this one was this long or this one's this long, you've got an issue. This looks the exact same, okay? So I don't see any reason why this wouldn't be a perfect part to install in your vehicle. Something to take note of though, is that these axles do expand a little bit. They expand and contract. So if you're looking at your axle and one maybe seems like it's quite a bit longer, you know, it's extended out further than the other one, well, that's not really so much of an issue because it just contracts, okay? You can put them both in contract mode there or extended mode, whatever you wanna do. But the main thing that really matters is that the overall length is about the same, but this length right here and this is the same, and this one right here and this right here is the same, okay? Another great thing to notice is the new one doesn't have this dampener right here, which you might think that, oh no, it should have it. But really, this is an issue. Um, a lot of Hondas had an issue with water getting underneath here, rotting out, and axles breaking. And that might even be the reason why you're replacing this axle. We did away with it. You don't need it. Um, so I would say we're gonna go ahead and install this quality part. And if you need this part or any other part, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks.
So the next thing we're gonna do, now that we have the axle out, we're just gonna take a look at our seal, which is this right here, okay? It's nice, rubber, should be super soft and pliable. If it seems like it's hardened or uh, cracked, dry rotted, uh, split in any way, you'd wanna replace that, which is fairly easy to do on these. This one right here is actually in great condition. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about replacing it. Something else to note would be if you pulled the axle and a lot of transmission fluid came out, um, you would wanna make sure that you, of course, double check your transmission fluid and put it back up to par, okay? Fluid comes out, fluid needs to go in, all right? It's always good habit to check your transmission fluid anyways, but if fluid came out, you need to really check your transmission fluid, okay? So we know the seal's good. We can use a little bit of, uh, if you wanted to, and you had maybe some Vaseline, or silicone, something like that. You can put a little bit along the seal just to keep it lubricated. And then we're gonna take our new quality 1A Auto, 1A Auto axles and we're gonna put it right in there and we'll get it all mounted up. I got a little bit of silicone right here. Uh, if you had Vaseline, that would probably work a little bit better because it'll just kind of melt down and dissipate a little bit. This is just gonna kind of help the axle slide in around that seal without hopefully damaging it in any way. We want that seal to stay nice and good up there, okay? So we got that in there. We're gonna have a rubber mallet ready. I'm gonna put the axle back in the way that I took it out, right in through up here. See if I can get it weaseled in. Being careful for my seal, like I said, that's super important. There we go, I got it lined up. Now I'm gonna get this down to working height. I've got my nut on there so I can't damage any threads. I'm gonna use my rubber mallet, bonk, bonk. I'm gonna bonk it in. Once it bottoms out in here, right back where we were looking at before, um, that should be pretty much right up against the transmission by the time we're done, okay? So once it clips in, we're done with that, and we'll move along to the next step. I've got my rubber mallet. I've got my nut on here. Not that I could probably damage any metal threads with my rubber mallet, but just in case. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drive this into the transmission. I'm gonna wait till I feel it pop and snap in. Then I'm gonna go under, I'm just gonna take a peek Make sure it's, the axle is right up against the transmission. It's not sitting this far away anymore. It should be pretty much right up against, okay? Okay, that felt like it went in pretty good. I'm just gonna put this down. I can give this a little shake. That feels good. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this off. We're gonna put the axle back through our wheel bearing right here, okay? Then we'll start putting everything back together pretty much the opposite direction that we took it apart. All right, so now I'm gonna use a little bit of Copper Never Seize. I'm just gonna try to spray it right on the splines right here. This is just gonna help it come out sometime in the future in case we ever have to do, you know, an axle or a wheel bearing or anything that we have to take this back apart. This will come out of the wheel bearing easier next time, okay? So just a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy and I don't really need to get it on the threads right here. Um, it's okay if you do, it's not the end of the world. We don't need to, basically. So now I'm just gonna try to get this down. See if I can move this enough. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna get it back up and through here. Being careful not to mess up my boot. Just try to squish it. Squeeze it up through here. Like I said, I wanna be careful not to mess up my boot. Last thing you want is moisture or anything getting in here. It's a brand new boot, and uh, I don't know if you wanna watch my video on how to do the axle again, but I guess if that is the case, then go ahead and do that. Anyway, I can get this through here, get it lined up. I'm just gonna wiggle it. Uh, if you wanted to, you could put a nut on here. The only problem with putting the nut on there is if this was to drop back down, the axle's gonna wanna pull from someplace, so you take the risk of pulling your axle uh, joint right here apart. So if you want, until we get the rest of it situated, you can just kind of leave that nut off and floating. Basically, you just want to have the axle sitting in there for now. Let's see about lining up this little wishbone fork here. Might have to use something like a pry bar. Just give it a little twist. You know, there's lots of things that might be going on with your particular situation that might be different from mine. But for me, this fork right here is kind of twisted, so I need to deal with that. I'm just gonna get this back up and sitting up here, just so I don't have to keep holding on to the knuckle. Okay, 
Now I don't have to worry about it flopping down, hit me in the face or hurting me anyway. And I can try to figure out this situation. So what I need to do is I need to twist this, get it lined up with this hole, and then I'm gonna get that long bolt. I'm gonna start bringing it through here, through there. And I'm not gonna really push it out all the way yet because what I wanna make sure I do is put this sway bar link nut back on while I still have access to it. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit more copper never seize. I'm just gonna coat this bolt right here. This is where it goes through the uh, bushing and the lower control arm. Generally speaking, it'll be going through like this. And right inside here, these things almost always seize up. So we got very lucky that this came out. It kind of looks like it was getting to be on its way. So I'm just gonna spray it with some never seize. And this is gonna make somebody's life a lot easier down the line. You're welcome. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my control arm and I'm gonna try to lift this up and try to lift the control arm up so it meets up with this. Line up those holes and put the bolt through. So here we go, wish me luck. This little piece right here is gonna come off so I'll just get it out of the way now. See if I can get them lined up. So let's think if this isn't working, right, which it isn't, I'll show you something that you can try. So I'm gonna use my Phillips head screwdriver. I'm not gonna be using it for what it's intended for. There's no screws right here that I'm gonna be undoing. Uh, so it might get damaged. That's something to think about. Uh, you do you, boo-boo. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to line up these two holes with this because it's pointy. So once I lift it up, I'm gonna try to shove this through from the backside, right? I'm gonna get everything so it's lining up and I'm gonna keep that in there so I can move things around a little bit to get my bolt through, okay? So that's my plan. Stick with me, kid. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, so that's through there now. now I'm gonna make sure that this thing can't fall down. Just like that. Now I'm gonna to try to see through this hole right here and see what I need to do to line it up. What you might have to do might be a little bit different than what I have to do. I'm just gonna to try to tap it in. That's went through pretty good. So now I'm just gonna bring it back out a little bit. There we are. I can do this link. I'll put it back through here, get my nut on, and then I can push this the rest of the way. Tighten this up. I'm gonna to torque it, of course. And then we'll move along to tightening up the rest, okay? We've got our sway bar link. That's gonna come through this hole right here. It's gonna come through. I'm gonna use my nut for this application. It's a 15 millimeter. Just gonna see if I can line it up. The shaft does move around, so if it doesn't line up perfectly with the hole, just move it around. It's just a ball and socket, okay? Easy peasy. Get that on there. Now I'm gonna blast this on with my 15 swivel. if I can do it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna try to get my Allen head in there and I'm gonna use a 15 ratchet or a ratchet wrench, I mean. I'm gonna try to tighten it down that way just to show you what it'll be like, you know, trying to, trying to do it with this in here, okay? All right, so to hold the inside of that sway bar link, I'm using a 3 16 Allen head right there. It's going right in the center. I'm gonna use my ratchet wrench. You can use whatever you've got. 15 millimeter for this application. I'm gonna hold the stud still with the Allen head and just tighten the nut down. Nice and tight. Let's get our stuff out of here. There we are. Now we'll just drive this the rest of the way through. We'll tighten that up or snug it up a little bit and then we'll torque it down. So I'm gonna drive this through. There we are. I'm gonna use my 17 millimeter nut there. I'm just gonna tighten it down. Just pretty much bottom it out, okay? I'm gonna use my 17 wrench on the backside there. Snug this up just so it bottoms out. And then we're gonna torque it to 47 foot pounds. All right, here we go. I'm gonna torque this down to 47 foot pounds. There we are. I'm just gonna do it one more time. Okay, so that's nice and torqued. We tightened this down. We didn't remove this. We've got a couple bolts there, a couple bolts over here, and then this right here. Let's keep rolling. Okay, let me get this back off of here. 
Could have been harder. We've got our slotted ball joint nut. Just gonna get this started on here. I'm gonna turn a little bit to the left just to find the beginning thread. And then I'm gonna go right. I'm just gonna bottom this out. I'm gonna torque this down to 35 foot pounds. If it doesn't line up the slot with the hole that's in there, I'm just gonna bring it to the next available hole, continuing tightening. I'm not gonna loosen it to the next hole. I'm just gonna tighten it, okay? It's probably pretty close. Get it going here. Just get it down to 35. There we go. Okay. So, looks like we're just past the hole, which is kind of a bummer, but it's okay. I'm just gonna bring it, like I said, to the very next hole. Torque wrench is barking at me. It's okay. Here we are. Now I'm gonna put my cotter pin through. Brand new, a little bit of goo on it. Should just go right through. If it gives you a struggle, Bonk it. I'm gonna grab the ears. I'm just gonna pull them around. You can put one on one side, one on the other. You can bring one down here, one over, whatever you wanna do. All that matters is that it's peened over and this cotter pin cannot come out on its own. This locks in this nut and the nut holds this ball joint together. If this comes apart driving down the road, it's bad news for everybody, okay? So here we go. We got that done, nice and torqued. This is done, this is done. We're looking pretty great here. Let's get some small bolts in here. We'll get a nut on here. We'll torque it all up and then we can get the wheel on. I've got my bolts and my nuts. I'm just gonna use a little bit of copper never seize. I love this stuff. Just makes my life easier down the line or the next person's life or next person's job, whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> get that up here. This one, see if I can get it through. I got that bracket. It has a little ear. The ear just sits in the hole. It's very important to make sure that you have all these things secured. Sometimes what you might notice is maybe this bolt broke, this one broke, or any of them broke, right? Down here, you're pretty lucky. If one broke, you still got another one. It holds it secured. Uh, you could probably get away with that. Um, but if your brake line wasn't secured and it's just doing this, you need to figure out a way to get it to stay. You could use something like a wire tie. Just try to get it on there. Basically, just so this can't move around, get caught in your wheel, get caught in your axle. I don't know. Just do what it's not supposed to do, okay? Just get these started in here, 10 millimeter. Okay, those are all definitely nice and tight. Lines are secured, perfect. We'll get our nut on here. We'll find out what our torque's gonna be. We'll move along. All right, so I'm gonna use my 32. I'm just gonna snug this axle nut down. I'm not gonna go too tight because I wanna torque it to 135 foot pounds. I'm gonna continue with my 32 millimeter socket. There it is, I'm just gonna hit it one more time. Cool. Now you'll notice the top of the axle right here has a little notch out, all right? That's so we can peen this axle nut down. You wanna use something like a punch or whatever you happen to have and peen this down so it'll lock it in. That's just gonna prevent it from backing off somehow down the line. So just kinda of peen it down. There we are. Some people might be tempted to use an air gun on that and blast it on nice and tight and maybe even hammer on it. What's gonna happen at that point is you're gonna damage your wheel bearing back there. If you did happen to use the air gun for some reason and you just bottomed it out, just go very gentle, bottom it out, and then make sure you torque it to 135 foot-pounds. So now I'm gonna get the wheel back up on here. Just like that. Got my 19 millimeter lug nuts with my socket. Just get them on. All right, so now I'm just gonna bottom these out in a star pattern, okay? I'm not gonna go very tight because it's only 80 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna get the wheel so it's just barely touching the ground and it can't spin like that. And then I'm gonna torque them down in a star pattern. 
I'm just gonna tighten these down with my 19 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go in a star pattern, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna make a nice pretty star. And if I felt like it, I can go around one more time. And it's really your prerogative, what you wanna do. I like to go around twice. Some people will say, don't worry about it. Okay, now I'll just go around. Nice and snug. There we go. Great job. Thanks for watching. If you want the parts to do it yourself, check out 1AAuto.com, the place for DIY auto repair.